Uh oh, Reggie's got the coffee. What kind of vlog are you guys in store for? Well, it's going to be a different type of one. I just want to have a conversation with you guys, and I'm so glad that you took a moment to join us. I don't care if you're a Corvette owner, maybe you're thinking about being a Corvette owner, maybe you just like cool cars and you say, this Corvette thing is kind of neat, and I like watching the marketplace because these Corvette people are just nutty. Yes, we are. <laughs> We're going to discuss today that is a topic that's all over the place, and it really is literally all over the place. C7 Corvette. What's going on right now? What's going to happen to that car? C8 generation Corvette. When is that going to happen? Uh, I want to give you some insight from my retail position and also some stuff from the gut and from the heart. And also today in the vlog, in addition to just a nice conversation, so grab some munchies. I, I want you to take the time to really listen to some insight that I have for you and, and some comments and some questions that you've given me. But also what I have for you today is a clip that many of you, pretty confident that many of you have never seen this clip of Jim Perkins talking about Zora in the mid-engine Corvette. Welcome to the vlog, you guys. I do appreciate you taking the time to join us. You know, I really do need this coffee here late at night, but just really excited. This is the vlog I've been wanting to do, so I need to be here late at night with no distractions, no interruptions, because I just want to sit and talk with you guys and share some of the conversations and some of the questions that have just been going on that are just running wild regarding Corvette. But that's how into this car so many people are, and people that aren't even an owner yet. You know, a lot of people are trying to make a decision right now. Do I buy a C7 at a fantastic deal, or do I wait for the C8 car? We're gonna talk about all that today in the vlog. One of the questions has been posed to me, let's dive right into that. You know what, that's a good question. Is C8, the eighth generation of Corvette, going to be a good launch for Corvette? At the end of the day, I just, I know in my heart that GM will not disappoint. Uh, but before we talk about the launch of C8, let me give you an idea of a couple launches that, that I've had the opportunity to be a part of in my 23 years of selling this car, uh, I thought went well. Uh, let's talk about the car that actually saved Corvette, and that is the C5 Corvette. I mean, you talk about the C4 being built from 1984 to 1996. Uh, you think some people wait for a new Corvette? A uh, Corvette was under instruction from corporate to go away, bye-bye. But you know, the corporate guys didn't understand us as enthusiasts, that this is a great connection of people, it's not just cars. So uh, God bless Jim Perkins and where we're at today, it's given me a career that I never thought I'd have an opportunity to have in a car that I really, truly enjoy. So going back to 1997, let me just share this with you real quick, because this was, this was a fun launch for me to be a part of, and the dealership I was at at the time, uh, we kind of did it like old school. For some of my older clientele that's watching right now, you remember, remember the days that you waited and you would go to the car lot and you wanted to see the new cars that came out? That was like, that was like the thing. You got the family together, let's go down to the dealership and see the new cars. There would be like a new car reveal. It would actually be a reveal. Well, that's what we kind of did with the 1997 Corvette. For those that actually got a car, only select dealers in 1997 got a Corvette, and you were only supposed to have one on a certain launch date. They sent the car in advance. We had to keep it under a cover. You know how many times I took the car off? And said, okay, here's the car. <laughs> we took the car off and showed people, but really couldn't sell the car, couldn't do any demo drives, that kind of stuff, to a set date, which was like almost a month after we'd gotten the car. So we had 30, 40 cars that were built. And I'm, not really, you know, I'm still kind of new in the marketplace here, but I was, you know, rising in my position with Corvette, and I just like, We've got all these cars down in Bowling Green. Why, why aren't they here? So I ticked off a lot of people and we end up having more Corvettes on our lot on that official launch day than any dealer in the country. And it was fantastic. We had nearly 800 people at the dealership and we did it old school. You know what we did? We took newspapers and covered up the entire showroom. You couldn't see in. People were standing outside wanting to see what's going on. We covered the service department. We had cars with covers on it on the showroom floor. And when we announced that we were open and we were ready to reveal the new Corvette, we let customers tear the newspapers off the windows. Man, it was so cool. It was so exciting. And people were just like flocking to go inside and check out the 1997 C5 Corvette that really not just a sports car, now it bared the name of user-friendly sports car, and it certainly was. And that launch was hugely successful, not just because of the car, but because of the marketplace. There was such a pent-up demand waiting and wanting a new Corvette, and this one was different, and it was a new era for Corvette, which leads me into the next successful launch that I had an opportunity to be a part of, and that was C7. 
General Motors went through all kinds of financial stuff. You guys know that. So in the last five years of C6 production, we only averaged 13, just over 13,000 cars. Okay, that's not much. Big pent up demand waiting for C7. And I can tell you this, and I talked about this a long time ago on the channel, perfect time to mention it again because uh, it's it's right here in, and I want to share that with you. Uh, I was in the audience and I was dealing with all the negative Nellies, talking about, oh, the rear end looks like a Camaro. It looks like a Camaro. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it so much of that. I was fortunate to be in the audience when they actually did the world premiere of the 2014 C7 Stingray. And I was viewing it not only as a retailer, because, you know, that's what I do for a living, but I was really truly viewing it from an enthusiast standpoint. I want, you know, because at that point, we really didn't see the car yet. They had all the little teaser videos and the bits and pieces and that kind of stuff. But when that car came on stage, I wanted to know in my heart, okay, is that a car that I really like? Is that a car that I'm gonna feel confident representing? I, I just, there was a, you guys, you guys had me questioning my career. I mean, there was, everybody was second guessing so many different things. But when that guitar ripped, the C7 come rolling out of the stage through the smoke, oh yeah. I was like, wow, wow, that is a win. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. And then it made me think about what Taj, our chief engineer said at a previous seminar within that year. He says, when you folks see the C7 Corvette going down the road, you're gonna go, oh yeah, oh yeah, I want one of those. And just about everybody did. So the C7 Corvette basically was a game changer, not just for existing Corvette clientele. You know what, here's the other funny thing. Everybody that said, oh, the taillights look like a Camaro. The, the taillights, I don't care what they say. You know, if you want to say it looks like a Camaro, you can, but it doesn't. There's no way that it, you can compare that with a Camaro unless you're maybe a Camaro owner and wish you had one of these. After you guys saw the car, after they started showing up at the lot, Guess what? I didn't hear that. Not once. People just went, wow, you really had an appreciation of how sculpted that car was. Bottom line, that car was gorgeous. I mean, it still is gorgeous. I don't want to talk about it in past tense. But here's where it also changed the game, is by stepping up the production numbers because we had a whole new market that wanted this car. Now, for me, selling this car until C7, I never had a BMW, a Porsche client, an Audi client come up and say, I'm interested in a new Corvette. That's what happened. That's why the production numbers have increased because we have new family members. I mean, if you look at the last five years of C7 Corvette production, I mean, we nearly tripled what the last five years of C6 Corvette production was. So do we have a new marketplace? Do we have new clients? Absolutely. We've got a car that we enjoy driving and that we're proud to own. Now that's an interesting question. Over time, how will the C7 generation be viewed in the marketplace? Well, for just what I talked about, the pent up demand that was waiting for a new Corvette once again, when C7 Corvette came out, I think, I mean, we're still seeing that effect today, that people that couldn't afford that $75,000 car, really wanted it, are now looking at some nice pre-owns, 14, 15, 16, what have you, uh, that fit in their budget and still gives them an opportunity to be a part of that car. And a lot of folks are like, well, I'm, you know, I'm kind of waiting for C8 because I'm waiting for the C7 prices to go down. <laughs> go, go down to what? They're <laughs> already down do you want they're already down have you guys been paying attention we're trying so hard i mean there's so little margin in these cars i mean we're doing all we can from the 19s to 18s some left over 17s and the deals are just bizarre we you know we at this dealership do some creative things behind the scenes to present you some crazy deals that you scratch your head and you, yeah just get the checkbook and just do it enjoy yourself enjoy the car don't question it stop <laughs> stop dreaming start driving yeah right <laughs> I mean, that one does blow my mind. We're waiting for the price to go down. They're already down, are you kidding me? And part of it is down is, is not because, a lot of people think, well, the prices are down because the C8's coming. There might be a small play into that. You know why they're down a little bit? Because there's so many cars. That's why the prices are down. We're just not accustomed to having this much availability of Corvette. And with availability becomes pricing flexibility. All right. Okay, that's a good question, and it's a valid question, especially if you're on the fence thinking about buying a Corvette. Do you get a C7? Do you get a C8? Here's a bummer for me as a retailer. So we really don't let anybody else tell you differently. General Motors has not told any dealer definitively this is when C7 ends. 
all right? I mean, it just Don't buy into any of that right now. We really just don't know. So it is hard for me to help gauge you guys and what direction you may want to go. We're just doing the very best we can with what we have. Now, I can tell you this, things are starting to kind of fall into line. Some intel that I had, uh, it, it had been 2013, 2014, uh, I was told that the C7 generation was estimated to be about a five-year car. <laughs> Look where we're at right now. I mean, everything is falling in line. Oh my gosh. So does C7 end actually sooner than you think? In a little bit in this video, I'm actually going to go through some timelines and what to anticipate. And if you're thinking about ordering a car, what could happen and some things to kind of be prepared for. All right. Yeah. So you think about it, it's been five years and it's just kind of flown by in a blink of an eye. But I think some people expect too much too quick. C8, C8, what's going on C8? Sometimes you just got to sit back and enjoy what you have right now and that is really truly a wonderful value, a lot of flexibility to purchase one that you didn't have when the car launched in 2014. So yeah, you, you've got some choices, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, we know Corvette is a performance car, but many of you just keep pushing to want more and more and more. Let's face it, you can't handle what you got right now. <laughs> Now, Mark Royce, the vice president of General Motors, he mentioned and we shared part of that in a recent vlog. He talked about ZR1. It is the end of the C7 era. That's all we got. Performance, power, technology. That's all we have for you for C7. So, indirectly, do you read between the lines? Okay, so we've got to move to C8, but is he saying this is all we have for you in a front engine car? And that's why we're about to embark on an entirely new era with the C8 mid-engine car. I mean, can you believe with some of the spy shots and the video that we've even shared on this channel, people are like, are they, are they really going to do it? I mean, is uh, uh, a mid-engine car? Have you looked at the stuff? Yeah, the car's done. The car's been done. Hey, believe it or not, that car is coming, and that's why we're discussing it right now in today's vlog. Well, here's the thing, guys. If you look at the C8 spy shots and some of the video that I shared with you here on the channel, I mean, I went to great lengths to get that video for you and not violating any copyright laws. Uh, you're not looking at black bags on it now. I mean, you're looking at a thin skin that contours the body. Here's my question. Now, here, let me just tell you this first. What you're looking, remember what you're looking at now. General Motors knows that we're watching. What you're looking at, it, it, and they like to play the game a little bit, okay? Don't, don't kid yourself. They're probably sitting back enjoying the show, the conversations and the videos and what have you, but don't think for a second what you're looking at on the track right now is a finished product. There'll be, the finished product's gonna be whatever, ta-da, it becomes and we see. Are we close? Oh yeah, we're close. But here's the, I was gonna ask you, and this is the thing that concerns me a little bit. Looking at that car on the track, the only thing I wanna, I, I wanna see out of that car is when I see it, identify it without a doubt that it's a Corvette. I wanna be able to look at that car and know that it's a Corvette. Now look at this picture. If I take the Corvette logo off the front nose of this Z06, Come on, you already got, you guys know what that is. That's a Corvette. Now, if I take the logo off this car, what do you think that car is? And what do you think this car is? And what's that car? But you guys all know what this car is. That's right. Identifiably, this is Corvette. And I guess that's all I want for the mid-engine car is to look at it and say, yes, it's different. We know that it's a new era, but yeah, that's, that's Corvette. We, we gotta be able to say that. Okay, I've been asked that one a bunch of times too, and rightfully so, as a retailer, what do I think conveying to you guys of the C8 Corvette? Bottom line is, I don't have enough information to really make a formulated opinion on it. Uh, like I just said, uh, I wanna be able to look at that car and know that it's Corvette. And here's, and here's what I think about the mid-engine car. I guess I got a little bit of soft spot out of respect to Zora. The Corvette team to this day uses the what would Zora do philosophy. Now, when I was just getting into the business and before I became a Corvette-focused only specialist, I never had the opportunity to meet Zora, but the studies I've done on him, uh, he was way beyond his time. And I remembered back when General Motors put out this 100 years of Chevrolet CD. And on that CD, this is the clip many of you have not seen, that I just love the story that Jim Perkins tells about Zora. Back then, you weren't supposed to be building race cars inside GM. Duntoff found a way to do it kind of in the closet. He had to find engineering dollars and do all the testing. His passion drove, absolutely drove, the effort on those cars. 
he was after me all the time to do a mid-engine car. You know? And uh, he came walking into my office. He said, I bring plans for mid-engine. Look at the plan. Look, perfect, perfect car. I said, we can't do it. We just can't afford it. You cannot afford it. You're saying no? You're telling Zora no? I said, I'm telling Zora no. He said, he rolled plans up. Said, Very well. I build this son of a bitch myself and walked out of the office. That's the passion that this gentleman had at 80 years old for that car. <laughs> was way ahead of his time. He could see the future. And he wanted to make sure that the Corvettes were successful. I'm sorry that clip wasn't of the best quality in audio, but it's really special. And still to this day, I get excited and I smile thinking about it, knowing how far beyond Zora was. Thinking outside the box, man, was he way ahead of his time. And I'll tell you what, it, it, we owe him so much to Dean and be right now talking about this car is because of him. So what do I think of the C8 mid-engine Corvette? I will tell you this, out of respect to Zora, that I'm just excited that they're going to make the car. And I know that they've made provisions to protect his name. I'm just hoping somewhere, one of these models, that it bears his name as it should. You know, heading into a new era of Corvette, and I think that's what we're on, uh, is exciting but it's also scary, you know, partly because of the unknowns. You know, I still wonder, hey, and a lot of you guys have said the same thing. Hey, is it going to fit a taller guy? You know, what do I do for storage? Do we do we lose that user friendliness just because we can be the faster car on the track? And a lot of you folks don't even drive your cars that way, but that's what this car is. And many people wonder if there's going to be a front engine C8 car, including myself. Now, of course, we're all waiting on specific details for the C8 mid-engine Corvette. You've seen the stories in many magazines that wrote about it, about three different engines on the car. Uh, again, we don't have any details on that for you yet from the dealer standpoint. And here's the thing. For some of the folks that work in those residual parts of General Motors that are actually designing the engine, if those engines are signed off on, you're looking at data that wouldn't be available for stuff they're planning many years down the road. But those guys are equally excited and think sharing that information is going to mean something. Unfortunately, all it does is confuse the marketplace just a little bit because once you hear, yes, this is coming, you expect it right now, not knowing you're getting the beginning confirmed data of a future product that could be five years away. But we are in the information age and everybody wants everything right now. And uh, uh, that's just not how it works with Corvette. Uh, many of you know that. So you got to be just a little patient and allow the team to present it when they're ready to do so. All right, timeline ideas. This one's gonna make you dizzy and go all over the place, but let me give you a couple of different scenarios that very well could play out. Now, we had thought early on, uh, even back in April I was talking to people, that they were saying, you know what, uh, because, now this is what I was told years ago too, that the initial mid-engine car was going to be such a low production car that they would need to keep their volume up and sell cars, that they were going to build the C7 generation alongside the C8. I don't know if that's the case anymore. And that was been talked about as soon as last April. Now I think there's a changing at the guard. So this is something that could happen again sooner because some of you may not be ready for this. Okay, here's one scenario that could play out. As soon as, coming up now, we're not seeing any teaser videos, which GM is famous for. They're really good at that marketing and milking stuff. But let me just stop there for a second. They're good at marketing and milking stuff, but ah, I'm glad, this is popping my head, sorry. When's the last time that we saw a Corvette commercial? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> How about promoting and pounding on your chest and being proud of the brand? A radio commercial, TV commercial, something. Okay, so here's a scenario that could play out. A lot of people are talking about the LA Auto Show. That's coming up at the end of November. And I'll tell you what, I've been at Detroit a number of times. Uh, I was at the LA Auto Show for the first time last year and I'll tell you, that was an impressive, impressive venue. So if they want to use LA to launch that new car, <laughs> touche, great way to go. It's better than Dubai. But it is. I think that's a great venue. I mean, it's Hollywood, it's glitzy, it's glamour, it's bam, here you go. 
uh, that's a great place. And Detroit's going through some changes right now, and I apologize in doing this video. I haven't had an opportunity to confirm that if they're even doing a show in January like they normally do, because Detroit is trying to move their show into the summer and evolve more of an outdoor venue type of scenario, uh, make it a little more customer involvement type of thing with their displays. So, I mean, they're, they're basically trying to save that show. I mean, a lot of stuff's been going on there, so it'll be interesting to see. So, I think LA would happen. So, if they launch the C8 Mini engine car in November, what does that mean for C7? Let me tell you this, my production data only goes until March, which I think is a little confusing because if many of you have been in the Corvette marketplace, you know that usually they build through June, you get a little bit of vacay time, come back, start building the new model year, uh, toward the end of July, they start shipping sometime in August, and here we go. Well, we, you know, we started ZR1 back in March, and now my data for distribution only goes till March. So. Uh, do they end C7 as soon as March? You know, or do they say, okay, here's the C8 car they revealed in November, and of course, you know, it's still going to take some time to ramp up and change over and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then you, you start ordering the car next summer, and then what they're going to do is maybe from April until August or September, build a very short window of 2020 C7 Corvettes, and then at the same time, launch, move forward, and do 100% all C8 Corvette. We just don't know. Or do they end C7 production in March, and then there's no production at all for C7 for 2020, shut down, change over, C8 starts building in July, start shipping and coming to the dealerships in September. That's one scenario. Or do they do the November reveal, build 2019 Corvettes until March, start 2020 Corvettes, build them through the summer alongside C8 mid-engine Corvette, Okay, another scenario, well, it's Detroit and all the corporate stuff. Maybe they use the Detroit Auto Show to launch that car, but yet not actually reveal it for production until almost at the end of the year and build C7 Corvettes until the C8 is ready to go. And of course, the other scenario is simply brain damage. We could look at the C8 Corvette covered up in camel, driving on our regular roads for another year. Now, what does that remind you of? ZR1. Yep, ZR1 was late in its release. Speaking of ZR1, if the first scenario I talked about, if they reveal this car in November and they kill C7 production in March, guess what? 2019 was a one year only for ZR1. And I know when it comes to ZR1 right now, a lot of people say, oh, that's a limited production car. No, it's not. There's a difference. It's not a limited production car. It's a controlled production car. Because if it wasn't if it wasn't taken so long with a carbon fiber piece as parts, they would build the living daylights out of this car. And I think right now they're a little frustrated and I think they're a little bit behind schedule as far as where they're at with ZR1. I think there's been speculations on what they would build for 2019, and they've had a great long 12 months to build ZR1. Uh, right now, I think they're on pace for 2,000, maybe 2,500 cars. Uh, many have guessed higher, but I think that's where they're going to be. Uh, the numbers are just so low, and it really, truly does take so much time because the artfulness and the beauty of that carbon fiber <laughs> just throughout the entire ZR1 is, is gorgeous and glamorous, and it's a car worth waiting for. And those of you that are on lists, You've called me endlessly and your dealer's not telling you what's going on. I apologize. I, I can't speak for them. You need to blow them up and find out if they've got an allocation. And those dealers need to be very forthcoming and letting you know, yes, we've got a car. I mean, we all got a letter from GM last November. You get this many. Okay? If you pass third grade, they should be able to answer your question. I mean, it is. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah, I mean, it really is as simple as that. But unfortunately, that's not what you guys are getting. Well, I guess if we do get the brain damage of the CA car driving around for another year, it could be a good thing. I mean, let's let's shake that first year new model jinx, okay? I mean, let's get rid of that thing. Let's launch a car. Let's have a blast. Let's enjoy the car and, and just keep her going. Uh, but if that's the case, uh, then you could be looking at another full year of C7 Corvettes that, again, they're using that March timeline, which is a little awkward to me. So you could look at uh, 2020 uh, going until March of, of next year, and then the 2021 model launching the C8. A lot of different scenarios can happen and play out. Um, and the only reason I'm really talking about that in this video, and I'm kind of all over the place on that, is because we really, number one, don't know. Uh, but I think... I think something is going to happen 
sooner rather than later. And again, going back to what we talked about earlier, seeing those cars where they're at right now and, and just in their camo as far as the visibility to us and what they're doing with the car, getting that test data, uh, they've got to be ready to go. We all know that they're building several prototypes right now in Bowling Green. So they're not doing it not to build and launch the car. They're building it because they want to present it soon, I assume, and then they can start retailing it even sooner. Real quick, a couple more thoughts on C8 Corvette. And what I was told years ago, I mean, is immaterial now, let's have the conversation, is that we thought we knew that there was gonna be probably three versions of this car. So they could eventually start doing volume in mid-engine. But initially, we were told it was gonna be the Zora car. It was gonna be the badass car out of the gate, the limited car, the car that was the Corvette of a lifetime. Here it is, but it was gonna be that hard one to get, and that's why you were still gonna see C7 being built aside. And then they were gonna trickle down and make a, you know, a, a detuned version, still a mid-engine car, so you kind of felt like you were a part of that, but something that you could afford as well. And car and drivers talked about that, and that leads me to just answer a couple of questions about pricing structure. I think where we're at and where I think the mindset is is to make the mid-engine car to be the feature car for Corvette, the new era for Corvette. Oh my gosh, there's all kinds of things coming. You guys thought I was joking about a sport utility car. I think that that's going to be more conversation down the road, but I think from a price point standpoint, you have to make that car affordable so you can do some volumes. And you got to have the Zora car that's got to in my opinion, it's got to be the special car. It's got to be the one that just, you know, your jaw drops to the ground when you see it. And yeah, it's extremely expensive, but it's worth every penny. But then the mid-engine platform has got to broaden itself. And we've seen speculation of uh, a car starting anywhere from $57,000 to $65,000. Now that makes some sense. And then you step it up and it goes up from there depending on how fancy you want your car to be. Now you can start doing some volumes and now, you know, <laughs> you know, for 50, 60,000, maybe 70 grand, driving a car that looks like a world exotic car, but it's a Corvette. That's pretty cool, guys. I think that's pretty cool. Um, again, I'm still nervous about that. I love the front engine car. I personally would like to see us do both a front engine and a mid engine car. I mean, look how big that plan is. I mean, what are you doing in there? I mean, you got enough room, right? It's not even a question of space. Oh my gosh. But uh, you look at the user friendliness, and I mean, I joked about putting a luggage rack on top of the car, but that's that's probably not too far off the mark for those of you that want to take your golf clothes, because then you look at, okay, what do I what do I put in that car? You know, I think from that mid-engine car, that exotic car segment that we're about to really, really step into, that we're, you know, like I said earlier, Chevrolet's not going to disappoint. I think this is going to be a win. I think it's going to be a rock star. Is it going to be a controversy? Absolutely. But I think the cars that we're going to compete with, we're going to smoke them on every level. Fuel efficiency, creature comforts, great warranty, great warranty availability with a, with a bigger dealer brand all over the country. You don't have to drive a thousand miles to find a dealer. You know, that's going to be, that's going to be important too. Cargo space, it may be limited. It'll be different from what we have now, but we'll have more than the competition. You know, to kind of end this vlog, I think we're definitely in for a wild ride. I, I know I haven't really answered any questions. I think from the retail though, giving you some of those scenarios and how they could play out, gives you an idea why I get a little nervous that C7 could be over like that. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was gonna order a car, hey, it's over. I mean, here, ZR1 is so slow in production. One of my most recent allocations I released um, a month ago is scheduled for build at the end of November. I mean, they're so far out. So if this thing was gonna end in March, it's like, oh my gosh, it's almost over. Regular Corvettes right now, I'm putting those in. Uh, last batch of the uh, Elkhart Lake uh, truckload that I ordered, uh, that's being built at the end of October. Don't forget, you gotta contend with a little bit of shutdown around Thanksgiving. You're gonna have a lot of shutdown around Christmas and New Year's, and you do stuff so far in advance. I mean, can you, you know, I'm already right now, a couple of weeks away, I'm looking at spring market. That's how far away we're looking at ordering cars and things like that. So, uh, you know, that comes up in conversation when I'm talking to a lot of you folks about ordering a Corvette. And, uh, and if ZR1 becomes a one year only car, um, all I can say is if you were lucky enough to get one of those cars, you definitely got something very special. For those of you that I've had the opportunity to discuss buying a car, it means a lot. Your business consideration is very, very important. I'm gonna be uh, more frustrated than you that I wasn't able to come through for you uh, based on some of the production constraints that we had to deal with. But uh, those of you on the short list, those of you uh, 
that are on a potential 2020 list. I'll definitely keep in communication with you. I'm hoping this video gives you a little bit of insight on uh, what could happen, what may happen. I guess just to be ready in case GM pulls the pin on this thing. Well, guys, um, I don't really know how to close this vlog. If you're watching at this point, I want to thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, yeah, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. I want you to come back. If you are new and you watch this and you say, you know what, um, this guy gets it. Uh, I'm going to be straightforward with you guys. I want to continue to build that relationship and that trust. Your opportunities mean so much to me. And just, you know, again, just being able to share what we share on this channel is really a thrill for me. So thank you for being here and thank you for the continued support. Uh, Based on our conversation today, let me hear your comments. Should they do C7 and C8? Should they do a front engine C8 car? What are your thoughts on the mid-engine car based on, you know, and it's hard, based on what we have so far? I'm really curious at your feedback. I love listening to your comments. I learn from your comments. Uh, it's a great engaging community that we have here on the channel, and that means a lot to me too. So it means you guys are paying attention, and it means that you guys care just like I do.